Hello, welcome to another Rangers Rabble Meets episode. Um, and today I'm delighted to say we are joined by uh, former Rangers player Harry Forrester. Harry, how are you doing? I'm great, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. I'm out here in uh, Sully, California. Not envying your snow, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as well. I've just literally was saying just before we had, uh, came on, I've just come back down from Scotland and yeah, it was uh, Thursday night, it was absolutely freezing. But um, how, how is that like when you're not when you're out there for like Christmas time and then it's just sunny? Is that hard to get used to or is it just? Yeah, it's a little bit weird. Um, it's still warm, actually. It's, I mean, it's cold for, for what we're used to out here, but it's, it's still warm, let's be honest. Um, yeah, it's a little bit different. I do miss the kind of Christmas vibe at home where it's cold and snowing and I do miss that kind of side of things, but any other time I won't complain. <laughs> no, you can't really. Um, so we'll just sort of jump straight into it and sort of start off when when you're a young player. What, what we tend to ask uh, most players is um, when, when you're a youth player um, coming up, are you just do you know that like, you're like miles better than everyone else at your age? Like because uh, when I played in school, I played with a few people that like went on to sort of decent standard. Um, and they were miles better. And I just think for guys that have actually gone on to more of an elite standard, is is it just does it just show more in those players? Yeah, I think so. If I'm being honest, I think you know, growing up being around the local scene, um, there was a couple who were kind of head and shoulders above everyone else. Um, yeah. And then you got sort of go on to the academy stage, I suppose, and like you play against the teams like Arsenal's and your Chelsea's and, and you start to see who's good and who's not and who might have a chance and who's not. But compared to your local friends and stuff like that, yeah, you're, you're kind of head and shoulders above everybody else from a, from a young, young age. It's kind of natural. Um, yeah. My dad sp spoke to me once about it. Well, as I grew up and thought, he said he thought when I was maybe eight or nine, like how good do you have to be if I'm not good enough to make it kind of thing? You know, how, yeah. how good you really do have to be. So I say it was kind of natural from a young age, yeah. Brilliant. Um, and just sort of looking at, at young ages, so you start at Northampton <clears throat> before moving on to Aston Villa, is that right? And I, so I seem to read that like at the time you had sort of like Tottenham and Man U sniffing about. Um, is, is that true? And, and if so, what, what led you to Villa instead? Yeah, no, so I actually missed out Watford there. So I went, I was at uh, Northampton when I was a young kid, um, like young, young, probably six. Right. Um, didn't really enjoy it too much, but wanted to get out. Um, Watford actually bought me from there for like three grand or something when I was six. It's something silly. Um, went, went to Watford till I was 16. Um, then I started to break in sort of to the England scene um, at 15, 14, 15 years old. And I think from there, obviously, I started to get a lot of interest. Um, yeah, like you said, there was various clubs that were, were kind of sniffing around at that time. And it was, a, it was an important time for me to choose the right path for my career next. There's a lot of things to yeah. think about, um, which ultimately led me to choosing Villa. Yeah, brilliant. Um, and, and obviously, looking on from there, like you, you talk about the, the next stage of your career and development. You get your first sort of real experience as a pro in the Scottish League, funnily enough, you, you moved to Kilmarnock on loan. Um, how, how did you find the sort of, the, I guess, the physicality of the, the Scottish League at a young age? Um, yeah, it was physical. I learned, I learned a lot there. To be honest, it was, a, it was a good learning curve for me. I was, I was sort of mothered at Villa. We had a, you know, multi-million pound training complex. It was, you know, chefs like everything you had there, and I kind of went out on loan, and we didn't get any of that. It was. <laughs> It was freezing the dressing room and, you know, you have to learn real quickly to grow up and man up. And then, like I say, on, on the field, it was a case of can you handle yourself? Um, the reason I went online was because I kind of, like you said, I kind of done it in the youth scene since I was probably 15, 16 years mm -hmm. old. I was playing reserves at that age and I was still playing reserves at 19. So it was kind of like go out and try and prove that you can do it in a men's game because that's the big question mark of people with talent is can you go and play in a men's environment where there's pressure and, and things like that. Um, so at first it was a little bit of a shock and then I felt like I kind of adapted to that. Um, I, I will say the league style at that age wasn't really suited to me and I, and I found it difficult to to really make an impact on any games, to be honest. Yeah, just as a sort of side note on that, then would, would you encourage sort of young players to go out and loan them? Because 
I spoke to um, he's a sort of an ex-Rangers youth player from the early 2000s and that, and he was very highly rated at the time. But they, they wanted to keep sending him out on loan, and he just bet he was like a home bird. He said he just didn't want to move away and he didn't want to go out on loan. Do you think that's sort of key to development in, in some cases? Yeah, um, I, I really do. I think when you're comfortable, um, you know, you, you take liberties to an extent and you get away with certain things that you wouldn't in certain other situations. But like you say, if you're as well, you've got your family around you, it's good to kind of get out there and learn how to deal with things on your own. I, I think a lot of people who who like to stay at home, got their friends and family around, for a small percentage, I think it works. Yeah. I think for a real small percentage, like, they get lucky or it just works and they, they're able to stay there for their whole career. Um, I think for most people, like, if they stay around their friends and their family too long, they end up drifting away from the game more and spending more time with their friends and family. And I think it's just a good learning curve for everyone to go out and, and get out of your comfort zone, meet new people and and actually realise, like I say, when you're at your Rangers is growing up and you've got that training ground, you've got you've got chefs, you've got et cetera. It ain't like that at a lot of the clubs. So sometimes stepping away and realising how lucky you are actually gives you a kick up the arse to say, you know, make this work where you are. Yeah, definitely. That's a really good point. Um, and, and just sort of lastly on, on Kilmarnock, I don't know how many sort of players you remember or how good they were in training, but we, so you around the time of uh, Alexei Eremenko, because like, yeah. he was like the standout when we used to watch like play, play Killy in the league and stuff. Was he just a, a sort of a far above the standard of, of everyone else? Technically, yeah. Um I think football in brain as well. He was very, very good. Um, obviously, I don't think he was in the best shape when, no. <laughs> when I was there with him. Uh, that's one thing I remember really looking at him as a kid as well, kind of looking up to him, thinking, and I was like, "Yeah, he's probably not in the best shape." So I reckon if he was, a, you know, if he was in the if he was in good, good shape and and a real athlete, I think he would have been a great, great player. Yeah. Um, so you sort of f- following on then from, from Kilman, you, you leave Villa at the end of that season, is it on, on a free transfer? Um, you yeah. sort of see interest coming in from it says, I mean, <clears> when I was doing the research, you played a, a friendly for the Ajax reserve, John Ajax, and scored a hat trick. Yeah. Um, and a bit, a bit of a Rangers connection there at the time because obviously the, the Ajax manager was Frank DeVore, a uh, former player. Um, but you, you decide on Brentford, so was was there actual concrete interest from, from Ajax at that time? Yeah, there was a contract on the table. Um, I went, I went out there. Uh, long story short, I was getting, I was getting let go of Villa. Um, we went on one tournament to Hong Kong. It was kind of a, a goodbye because there was like five or six of us who had been there a while that yeah. were, were moving on. So we kind of went, played the tournament, um, so on and so forth. I actually did really well in the tournament, and I was in a bar with everyone at the end of the uh, tournament, like everyone gets together, all the teams, yeah. it's a big thing. So we was all there and I was talking to um, the Ajax manager at the time. And I'm just like, I'm going to drop this in here. So I just said to him, yeah, I've been released. I've got no club tactically. And his eyes was like kind of in shock and I could see straight away. And then he made me write my number down on a napkin. Um, and in the morning in the foyer, there was, it was everyone was leaving and he just walked straight past me and I was like, he was, he was obviously drunk. He didn't remember anything and all my hopes had gone. So then I'm in the off season, like working hard. I had, I had Yeovil, I had Brentford um, with deals on the table. I was just doing my thing. And then I got this call out of nowhere from the head scout at Ajax saying, we've got a trial book for you. Da, da, da. When do you want to come? We're going to have you here for a week. And I was, I was over the moon. I couldn't believe it. Mm. And gone out there. Honestly, done really well. Uh, it was it just it just the way I play. I think you've seen that. It was yeah. it was all about the number ten. I was playing number ten. It was kind of like get the ball here. So I had I had the ball a lot. I, I was told to create things. It was it was great. Scored a hat trick. I said, and then I ended up staying for four weeks instead of the one. Yeah. Um, they wanted me to stay. But on the third week, Brentford were like, we kind of need to know if you're signing or not because they didn't want to take the opportunity away from me because I think they understood how big it was. You know. Yeah. Um. And it got to the point, again, like I said, it, I'd done it in the youth system. So it was like, am I going to play for Ajax or am I playing for Ajax reserves like that? Yeah, OK. It might, it might look great on the press. It might look great to everyone else that I'm playing for Ajax, but am I really, you know? Um, so my ego kind of got taken away and was like, right, what am I going to do? And it was like, go to Brentford, prove yourself for the next couple of years that you can handle the men's game, do well, get your name back out there and see where it goes. So 
it was a footballing decision to knock back Ajax and go to Brentford, which honestly every single person was like, "What are you doing?" Um, <laughs> but you know, when I explain it like that, it was it, it, it was just purely based on the longevity of my career at that point. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a mad mature decision really at that age to, to yeah. sort of turn that down and I think it plays into what you're saying about maybe not going out on loan for certain players that comfort zone and you know you're, you're obviously taking a chance on yourself but the, I guess the one step backwards to go too forward yeah yeah um so you, so you do go to to Brentford I think is it the manager at the time is uh is it Yui Rossler who sort of pops up all over the place when when we do these um yeah you have a uh, you know first place first season you finish um in ninth place the following season, you finish third narrowly um, and lose out in the playoff final. I mean, how is that as an experience? And and is it just a season of missed opportunity, or is it just like how gutting is that at the end of the season? Uh, I was it was it was bad for me because I kind of knew in my heart if we didn't go up, I was going to leave because I need I wanted to play Championship football. Yeah, and I, like I said to you before, like there was a two year plan where go and play and try and get in the championship in two years. And that was kind of, if I did, I did have a good season. So um, that was the plan. So it was actually a lot worse than than you'd imagine because we we had a penalty in the last minute of the last game of the season to go up. Wow. And we hit the bar. <laughs> so we've gone from going up with one kick, literally promotion done, to we've got another three weeks in when we should have been on the off-season chilling. So you've got to get yourself up for that. Um, we played Swindon, done the job there. It was good. We played well. Went to Wembley, played Yeovil. And and like, I think we had the self-belief that we was going to win. We didn't have the... It was one of them stories that at the time was like, Yeovil can't be playing in the Championship. Like, we have to be. You know, one of them ones. And, then, and we went. And to be fair, they scored and we didn't really turn up scored again and it's like we, we're not going to win here like we're actually we're actually down and out so we got one goal back and it's never really transpired so you've gone from like one kick three and a half weeks ago to going up after a whole long season to like the championship uh, playoff final sorry and and you, you you're going home and you're back in league one so for me it was kind of the end of a, an era because i really mm -hmm. want to i did want to go up with brentford and stay there um I just didn't feel it was right for me at that time to to continue. You know, I went yeah, into that's what, football. That's absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I actually do remember. There's one game I remember watching in the pub as a sort of young guy and and just being in disbelief that Yeovil were going to go and play in the championship. Oh, it absolutely crazy. blew my mind. Crazy. Um, so so you obviously. I mean, at the time, obviously we're going to come on to him later. Warburton's at the club at that time, isn't he? Brentford. He's, he's a coach. Are you sort of close to him at this time, or is he just? Just the coach that, that he, actually, he actually got me there. He actually got me there under Juve. So Juve didn't know too much about me. Okay. Um, I obviously had the Ajax thing on the table. So Mark was like, listen, come in, use it as like a fitness thing before you go to Ajax. Um, let Juve see you. Da, da, da. So I was like, all right, sweet. I'll, I'll do that. Come down. I went, I was there training there for two weeks. Um, but that wouldn't have happened without Mark, to be honest, because, you know, he kind of opened that door for me. Wow. That's really good. I just, yeah, it's always interesting to see like how you, because obviously you go back later on, and, and we'll come to that. But it is, it's interesting to see how these like guys sort of interact with players. They they come back to later on. Yeah. Um. You you obviously then do leave, like you say, for a Doncaster. I mean, the question was going to be, was it just about moving up a level, which you pretty much answered and said, absolutely going up to the championship. Um. But if your first season with with Doncaster is your restricted appearance was um through injury well from, from the stats anyway your injury is, is that what it was just a, a niggle, niggling injuries and is this the first time you've sort of experienced that at that point that the injury is keeping you out for long periods yeah so i've gone there to play championship football like i said and then it was a nightmare from probably like the first week um yeah. i got injured in training in a tackle that didn't need to happen if i'm being honest it was Looking back, it was a senior player kind of leaving his mark, I'd say, um, to the kind of new kid on the block. But it, it really injured me for like, what, three or four months, I think. Um, I was out, like, I couldn't walk. And then, um, so that was four months away. Come back, and then my first game back in the reserves after doing rehab and all the rest of it, I pulled my quad, but I tore it. So it was like another eight weeks 
kind of kind of deal, maybe three months. I can't remember exactly how long it was. Um, and then I come back and then done my meniscus. So oh. I had knee surgery. It, it was all like bang, bang, bang. It was just one after the other. Um, so before I knew it, I was looking at trying to make the last couple of games of the season. Like it was, it was remarkable. So I ended up playing six games maybe that season. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it just stopped me in, in my in my uh, flow. I'd say it kind of you know I had a great season under Brentford. Um, I had a real you know returns were good. I, I was feeling good. I was feeling confident. Doncaster really wanted me and, and shown that. So it was kind of like I was in a good place. And then it just it hit me. And then we got relegated. So I ended up playing no games in the champ. Now I'm back in League One, having to prove myself again. And, you know, and I'm being honest, the team wasn't as good, I don't think, as the Brentford team I was in. Right, yeah. But yeah. It didn't suit me as well. So I was in League One playing a different style. And it was just kind of like, you know, it just didn't work out. It was just one of them things that just didn't work out. But yeah, like I said, the injuries was the reason I didn't play that season. It was just one after the other. It was, it was kind of like the worst luck in the world. In the world. Yeah, and, and obviously, I mean... <laughs> not not to bring it back up a lot. Obviously, you, you do go down that season, and it's it's on goal difference as well, isn't it? So it's almost like it's like back to back. It's so crazy. Right? I was watching someone sent me something on Twitter the other day, and it was like worst free finishes to a league, like most unbelievable finishes. I played in two of them, and they both went against. <laughs> one where we've missed in the last game, last kick of the game. That was one of them, and the other one was the Donny one where we was at Leicester. Blues were. Uh, Birmingham City were losing 2-0. Um, we had to match their result to stay up. Yep. So they're 2-0 down. We're thinking, great. They, like, and it was the 85th minute or something, 86th minute. We're 1-0 down now because we conceded a penalty, but we're still good. Like We're, we're fine. They scored two goals in, in the last, like the 89th or like, the 93rd. It was also, I can't remember when it was. Don't quote yeah, me. Yeah. Late, late, late. Um and we've gone down on, on goal difference in the last minute. And I was like, not again, Jesus, like back to back years. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, that was another one for the, for the, for the book. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's so weird. Like when I was uh, doing a bit of the research, I was looking at mm. the classes and like, like you said, you, you, you actually can see that penalty. I think it's like 15 minutes ago in your game that you can see the penalty as well. And yeah. even the game before that, I think you play Reading, you lose three, one, but both goals come in the last few minutes to, to lose the game. It's, it's so, those fine margins you see. There were so people. many that season as well. There was one game. At, uh, um, there was one game at Charlton. We're three 0 up, and they called it. They called the game off for waterlogged pitch, and we oh, went back and lost. <laughs> so like that. That's three points there that would have kept. Like it was just yeah. it was so many things that were just like. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's outrageous. Um, so obviously the following season you actually then. Do start playing again. You, you, maybe your injuries uh, subside a little bit. Um, it, just judging from the, the league finish, the team al almost sort of stabilised in in League One. Was that what you were expecting under Paul Dickoff? Could he have got more out of that team, or was it just sort of that that was maybe the level of the team and they had overachieved before? Um, I think that. When I went to Donny, there was a lot of promises of an investor coming in and, and a lot of come, things that didn't really happen in the end. They fell through. Um, so I think we built a team for the championship and it didn't work. And right. then the, it just didn't, we didn't click in League One either. You know, I don't think a lot of boys really wanted to play League One. It was, it's a difficult league if, if you're yeah. not 100% committed and in for it. And I think the way we went down, the fact that they went up the year before that and now they were back there, I think it was just a mixture of things. And it didn't really, we weren't really playing well, man. It was just, it, we weren't playing well. It didn't feel good around the around the place. And it's just one of them, you kind of know that you're going to finish mid-season, mid-table, mid and it was, it was going to kind of die out. Um, and that's kind of how the season went. It wasn't a great season, if I'm being totally honest. Yeah, I mean, I think you've hit the nail on the head in terms of how difficult that league is. You can see that from, I mean, the likes of Portsmouth, Ipswich, Sunderland, they've, they've all struggled down in League One. So it's certainly a difficult league. Um, you move on to the, the next season. And I mean, I had to bring this up because it's like one of the most bizarre things I see. Um, you play Berry, and is it, is it Berry you're playing? It is Berry, isn't it? Yeah, the, the ball sort of goes out, they throw it back to you. And you, you hit this ball sweet as a nut and yeah. it just flies over the keeper's head into the back of the net. Um, judging from the highlights, 
Leon Clark ran you guys ragged that day. Like, how he didn't have multiple goals, I don't know. So you'd gone one nil up on the back foot. Is there anyone saying, no, don't let them have a goal back from this? Because, I mean, you're not, you know, you're not... I mean, you're a couple, couple, that couple of lads were saying it, but I think it was always going to happen. So, like, it was, late, it was late as well. It was, like, 89th minute that happened or something. It was late, late. And uh, the ball's gone. We've... Something's happened. They've kicked the ball out, thrown it back to me. And obviously, I'm, I'm trying to kick it back to the goalie, right? But the thing what happened was it, it, they thrown it to me. And as I'm like mid swing, I've heard my gaffer shout, Don't let him catch it. Because obviously, if he catches it, he's going to boot down. Oh, can start. Yeah, yeah. We're under the cost. So, like, he's like, Make sure it goes out for a goal kick. So, like, I'm, I'm like, Oh, so I just, I just end up wellying it. I don't even think what I'm doing. I just smash it. But I've smashed it. And it's, as I've caught it, I thought, oh, I've caught that well. And I've looked, I'm like, <laughs> oh, no, that's has going in. But the keeper didn't even try and get it, to be honest. No, he didn't. He didn't no, help he me didn't. out. Uh, but he just let it go in. But to be honest, I don't mind. I got the goal bonus, so I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. Um, so uh, you miss – let me just catch up. Well. Um, um, so you missed quite a bit of that season. After, I mean, it looked like you had a decent start to the season in, in terms of output. Um and, and the team is sort of struggling. Are, are you just, there's a new manager as well. Are you just not finding favour of a new manager? Is it injuries? Is it a bit of both? Um, funny enough, I was talking about a new contract in uh, maybe November time-ish. November, December, coming out. Right me, me and Dick of having chats about it. Like, he went off me a free contract, blah, blah, blah. He gets sacked. Um, Darren Ferguson comes in. Um doesn't really take a liking to me kind of early on, if I'm right. being honest. I don't know why. Um, I know, you know, the formation he played didn't suit me. He played with wing back. Yeah. So, like, I'm a winger. It was like, you know, square pegs around holes and, and it kind of didn't work. And then I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to play here. So then my head's kind of like, I've got six months left at this point on my contract. So I'm like, all right, now what do I do? Kind of, I'm probably not going to play much. Um, if he's playing with wing backs, he's you know kind of defensive minded. Sometimes it was it wasn't it didn't really fit me um, to be honest. So it kind of I just didn't play much. I just it was just the way you know football way it works. I just didn't yeah. play much at all, and and that was it. Um, we didn't fall out. We didn't you know it wasn't nothing personal. It was just you know that's what happens in in the sport we play. Unfortunately, yeah. No, I mean it's fair enough. So, yes, yeah, sometimes you just. You don't suit a formation, do you? It's just no yeah. one's fault. Um, so with December rolls around in, and we're going to get to the good stuff now. Uh, you join Rangers. Um, wh when did you hear of, of the interest from Rangers? And was it just a great chance for you to go be a part of this project and, and coming back up the leagues? Or were you a bit apprehensive at all that, they, that we were currently in the championship at that point? No, not at all. Um, I, had, I had a brief chat with Rob, obviously being good yeah. pals with him and he was there and um he loved it and i think um i don't know how the conversations went but I, I think mark was like why aren't you playing kind of thing like he didn't quite understand it so i just explained that you know my contract was running out i don't think they're going to give me a new one da, 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 like and then the formation so it come apparent that if i could get out of my contract without a fee or anything like that then there'll be something there for me. So we kind of agreed like a six month with Rangers where yeah. I actually took a pay cut to go. Wow. <laughs> um, to go and prove myself. And after that, we would see where it went. And to me, it was a no brainer because I wasn't really playing. And I, and I kind of, I had to, I still had the belief that I could, I could make something happen. Like, I, you know, I'm not a bad player overnight. And I knew that with the crowd, with this, with the occasions, I knew that's kind of what I've always wanted, and I, mm -hmm. I kind of, I just kind of rose to the occasions a lot of the times in my career. Even like when we played Chelsea, for example, when I was twenty, I got man of the match. Like it, yeah. I just loved the occasion. So I was like, this could be, this could be it, you know. So I went, ended up getting out my contract at uh, Doncaster for free, luckily, and then drove straight up um, for the Hibs game. I remember just. Before, just New Year it was, I think it was. New Year's Day, maybe, something like that, 26th, after Christmas. I watched the game there and then then signed. Yeah, it was it was great. It was a six-month kind of contract, 
to come and prove and see if it fitted and if after that if it didn't it didn't if it did it did yeah brilliant um i mean how how important is is mark warburton in that sense because obviously you've worked together um we, we were excited in scarf and he's obviously a very attacking manager we were very heavily possession based sort of side which is as a number 10 or, or even playing yeah. that wide it's, it's really going to suit sort of creative players like yourself so was it just really a, a lot of excitement to go and play in that sort of style yeah it was it was first thing ever, I knew I had to get fit so I, I was kind of like I don't know if you remember like I didn't play for probably a month or so mm -hmm. since I, got there. I was just trying to get fit because I hadn't played in a while um so I was doing that and then um got my chance and I was I was actually trying too hard. I remember, I remember like I was trying so hard to impress because I knew I had six months. So it was like, yeah. you know, like, and I was trying so hard. And I think everyone could see that, which is probably why the fans took to me in a way because I was trying. Um, and I just couldn't score or whatever. And I scored that one goal um, in the last minute. And from then it was like, okay, I kind of settled down and then um, started to play decent. Um, but like I say, going back to the way he plays is like, yeah, I get the ball probably five, six times more in a game than I would at any other yeah. club, um, which means I can try things, which means when I when I make a mistake, I get the ball right back and it's forgotten or I get I get three or four opportunities to, to make an, make something happen or, or produce a goal or an assist or whatever it is. So 100% that, that helped me and um, I think that's why I end up getting a good return that season on, on assists and goals, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and obviously... You do impress. I mean, I remember obviously thinking how good, like what a deal we had really to get you on a free. And Warburton was really, um, really thought highly of you. You signed a, a three-year deal then, um, following that in sort of 2016. Um, and it, I mean, I get, is this just like an absolute no-brainer? This, this is what you came to prove and, and basically got your reward? Yeah and no, actually. It was a little bit of a weird one at that stage because... I don't know how much I can say about this, but yeah, it was a bit of a, I, I, I come up with a, with a point to prove and I felt like at that point I'd proved it. Yeah. So at that point, when I was talking to the club and stuff, I was like, now, like judge me now as, as the other player. Don't judge me as, oh, I've come up here and I've, yeah, yeah. and I've come up here on a trial and, and now here's your contract, take it or leave it. I'm like, no, like judge me on how I've played. And if, if I'm a part of the squad or I'm a part of a team or, you know, um, so we went back and forward a few times and then then this is how weird football is, is that I went from kind of having nothing six months prior to having championship clubs saying, we'll take you on. Right. And I'm like, OK, so they're offering me good contracts. And it, we went back and forward and, you know, I wanted to stay. I think they knew that. They knew I didn't want to leave. So, you know, what it's like when... Yeah, they, they've got the power. You know, if, yeah, if they know you want to be there, it's like, take it or leave it. And, you know, I was a little bit disheartened by that a bit, but I signed the three years and then um, broke my leg flipping three days later. Yeah, it was literally about to come on. I mean, just, just on that, I think it's something that, I think the way, obviously, Warburton, I mean, it's still a bit cloudy about how Warburton ended. No one really knows too much, but um, I think one one thing that Ren has to agree on is he probably wasn't backed financially to the degree that maybe like Steven Gerrard got backed and, and things like mm. this. So, I think that sort of goes to show with your contract um, exactly that. And as I was about to say, so you come off in the the, the Petrofac Cup final um, against Peterhead. Um, I, th I think at the time, this is just like going from memory, but I, I think they were like quite hopeful you were going to play the semi final against. Well, that's what, at least what they said to the media that you were going to play the semi final. And um, sort of one of the other boys from the pod was like, "He's like, I, I remember thinking at that time, like we need Forrester for this semi final. Yeah. We won't beat him without him because that sort of form you were in." Yeah. Um, did you did you know it was serious at the time or, or no no I didn't and like you say I didn't know it was serious um, I wanted to play in that game so bad because I think it was the only old firm that I was like I knew I'd be starting do you know what I mean it was yeah. one of them that I was I was playing so I was so looking forward to it um, then I think we played on the Saturday maybe on the Sunday it was sore Monday it was sore Tuesday, I done a press conference with everyone about the game on about the old firm game, and then after that, I was walking back and I was like, "Can we get like an X-ray or something? Because this is killing me, and I don't know, like, it's not getting any better." Yeah. So then we done an X-ray, and it's like, "Yeah, I got a fracture in my in my in my leg." So 
that was me done, like for sure for the season. And I was I was gutted because I felt like if I'd done well in that game, it was kind of it would have capped the season off nicely. Where I've kind of come in as a nobody and no one really knows me. I, I kind of started slow, gathered momentum. I felt like I was probably playing the best I played under under anyone at Rangers mm -hmm. um, when I was there. And then you know it'd have been a nice way to probably go into that old firm full of confidence and just kind of see what I could do. But it wasn't to be, and then it kind of you know, set me back. Yeah, it's, and it was a shame because obviously you do, you do miss the semi-final and that's, I think I agreed with, with Lee from the pod that we were so frustrated that you weren't going to be there because of you were bang in form. Um, and I, I think at the time we were just like, Forrester and Mackay are going to sort of win yeah. us this, this semi-final. This is how we're going to win it. Um, uh, how hard was that for you to not be involved, um, especially considering that you sort of got us on the way there, didn't you? I mean, I still remember that Dundee game where you sort of steal the ball in like the first 10 seconds of the game and just belt it past the keeper. Yeah, so yeah. how frustrating was it? Yeah, it was It was hard to watch, man. It was hard to watch. Um, I, I I got over it quick enough because I had to be around the boys, but like mm -hmm. just even when they walked out and they lined up and I was like gutted because it was just the noise and the atmosphere and the occasion was something that, you kind of dream about, do you know what I mean, about being cringy. So it's one of yeah. them moments. No, no, like, no. <laughs> you're like, Jesus, like, just what if I wouldn't, that's that tackle. It was a nothing tackle as well. Like, like, it was literally nothing. That's why I didn't think I'd done anything to my leg because they were like, there's no way that force would have done anything. It's just, yeah. not, um, but it did. Um, so, yeah, it was hard to watch, but uh, what a game it was. Jeez, uh, it was a great game. And when we, when we won, I've, throw my crutches and started running <laughs> doctors chasing me like get your crutches it was wild, it was wild. Um, but no yeah even though I didn't play it it's probably one of the best days or games I've been involved with for sure yeah I've, I think it's fair I mean obviously it was disappointing the way it ended but as fans that game felt like the final for us so yeah and it, it was part of this journey where we were sort of trying to get back to that level and, and it, I mean it shouldn't have even gone to penalties I thought we absolutely played them off the park that day um, I actually thought Keenan in particular was unbelievable, like just yeah. spraying passes around for fun. Um, and yeah, I just, I couldn't believe, I thought we were going to lose just because of how well we played and, and obviously it's gone to penalties. Um, that that sort of effectively ends your season. Um, and I, I think it sort of shows on the team level. I've made this a bit of a hangover, but we don't sort of win any of our last four league games. We lose the Scottish Cup final. Um you, we, we get promoted, which was obviously the, the, the main goal of the season. Um, and, and back in the Premiership, what are the club's aims? What's Warburton sort of telling you guys at this point? Um, obviously, as fans, we're unrealistic. So we're thinking, wow, we've just beaten the semi-final, right? So we're going to go and win the league. Like This is what's going to happen. Back to 55 and, and everything's going to be great again. Um, is this sort of how the team is seeing it? I mean, we do bring in Barton and Kranjkar at the time. We're seeing as huge signings um, and obviously one didn't turn out great and, and the other I just think was was never going to be fit enough um so was this was there a belief among the players at that time or, or was it more steady progress no we had belief for sure we had belief before the game we was going to win that game like, and I really people say that but I, we genuinely believe that if we turn up we would win that game um I think personally looking back it's the worst thing we could have done because they really? sacked their manager and yeah, was like, this is not yeah. happening again. And I think beating them, like, I think they realised, like, they cannot come back up and and win this league and we're going to invest and in whatever they need to do. So I think actually by beating them, like, actually shook them up and was, like, probably worse for us in a way. Um, but we, we it's funny, I don't know, I don't know, chat the other day with, with another guy and I, I said that, we believed we could come up and do well. Like, there's no doubt mm -hmm. about it. We'd beat Premier League opposition. We beat Dundee. We beat we beat Selway. We beat other other teams. It wasn't that. It's it's can you do it over 30, 40 games? Yeah. Um, at a higher level, was the question. That looking back, I don't think we really looked at too tough because we were we were battering teams every week. You know, in the Champions. Let's be honest. It wasn't it wasn't the greatest league in the world. Yeah. So we were taking liberties and getting aware of it, win and still winning five nils and stuff. So I think in the in the Premiership, it was a case of like we were still very good. We were still um, putting it on teams, still probably the better team, but we were getting punished way more than we were before. 
So then all of a sudden your your two nils are now two alls or or where we was winning three nil, it's like you were losing because they because they've scored a goal or two. So it's you know, we you get punished at the at the higher level. And I think that's what happened with us. And then our confidence kind of dipped. And then, you know, you're playing for Rangers, they expect to win. Doesn't matter where you've been, what you're doing, like there's no, you know, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Um no. You know, there was a building process, but that goes out the window for like 90 minutes. Do you know what I mean? So um, it's just, a, I think it was a mixture of things, but I just felt we did feel that we could do something. Um, I think we shown we could. We, we played well in spurts, but doing it over a season, that's why the good teams are so good because they can can do that, you know? Yeah, that's a really good point, to be fair, because I think even once we strengthen now and in, in, in sort of current times, we, we've still seen that you get punished um, yeah. if, if you don't take your chances and, and, and things like that. So it's, it's a really good point. Also, um, so you up, but you're playing for Rangers. So, like, people... One thing I didn't ever understand was, like, how can you win... How can you beat Celtic, Aberdeen and go and lose to, you know, your lesser teams? But, like, it's hard because your lesser teams are playing, like, 120%. Cause yeah, yeah. You, do you know what I mean? And that's one thing we didn't get used to as well is, like, they're still giving it 120% because they're playing at Ibrox and they're actually... They're actually decent players as well, so you're going to get punished. Like it's, you know, it's a learning curve for everyone. I think at that stage. Yeah, yeah, I think we we literally have just said this about uh, the Rangers game tonight. Like the Aberdeen of, um, I think they had 18 percent possession in their last game against Celtic, and uh, like didn't I think they had one shot? And they're playing us tonight, and we just said, you know, that's going to be a completely different. They're going to be a completely different outfit tonight. Um, but it's a, it's a sort of mixed bag at the start of that season. Um, I, I sort of want to gloss a little bit over the, the old firm result because um, I think the less said about that, the better. The course is that the best step with, with the Joey Barton thing at the end of that. And I don't think, I don't know how much people can say about it, but is is that a unique experience you've had in football? Or do, or do these sort of bust up things happen regularly? Have you seen them before in dressing rooms like that? Because it all yeah, ultimately led yeah. into sort of leaving the club. They happen a lot. They? they happen, not a lot. They do happen, but they're not. They don't often get to the press for one. Mm-hmm. That's one thing about Rangers again is like something always happens to get to the press. Secondly, um, I just don't. They're normally settled and squashed, and, and and that's it. You know, I just don't know whether whether it was a continuous of things. I'm not sure exactly how it panned out, but there was a little bit of a scuff on the training ground, and you know things were said, and then literally we didn't see him again. It was kind of like, you know. So I don't know whether they have a chat afterwards together. I don't know what happened, but they come back in and was like, you know, Joey's not going to be with us anymore. So, you know, he was a, he was a good character, great career and stuff. So like you say, sometimes it just doesn't work out. And, and that was it. it was, we, we kind of moved on from that. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, but we have actually a couple more poor results. Uh, but then we actually get a bit of consistency leading up to sort of the, the next old firm. Um, I think we have one sort of bad result against Hearts, but apart from that, they're actually going quite well. Um, so it's unfortunately another loss in the, in the old firm. Does it feel, we, we also go on to win sort of one of those sort of seven league games around that time. Does it feel like the writing's on the wall at this point for the manager? I don't know if you can feel that as players or uh, are you fully backing him? Is he still confident he's going to turn this around? Um, obviously, obviously there's pressure because it's natural, like, and especially, mm-hmm. like I say, at Rangers, it's natural press, everything, everyone, everyone talks, you know, you're only as good as your last literally 90 minutes. So, yeah. um, the pressure's there. Uh, I didn't know whether it was going to happen. I don't know how it was going to happen. Um, I don't know whether he's going to get to see to the end of the season because of where we had been and we, you know, you don't have the expectations of the, of the board and stuff at like that season because, you don't know what's been agreed. Like, can we get to mid table or can we get like top four? I don't know. So we don't know, but obviously everyone's under pressure at that point. It's not just it's not just the the manager. It's everyone's under pressure. Like, yeah. Um, and I think you can see that in the way people play. People tense up, and when you play the way we play, expansive, and you have to be brave on the ball and you have to want the ball. All of a sudden, when it's tense and there's pressure, like people hide and people don't want the ball. And now it's now that pass that was easy three or four weeks ago is now like where's my past, you know, and it all just kind of snowballs. So, you know, I think everyone was feeling the pressure and in the end, obviously, kind of the the manager leaves and and a fresh face comes in and, you know, everyone's then, again, no matter who it is, kind of has a clean slate and a point to prove. 
Yeah, I mean, you've always answered two questions in one then. <laughs> uh, but what I was going to ask about the speculation, how does that affect the players? We obviously done that. Um, and then Pedro Kishina comes in. Um, you, you say, obviously, it's. I guess it's a bit of excitement to, to see how a new manager is going to play. But are the players a bit shocked by this at all? Because I, I remember sort of a common occurrence with me anyway is that most of my memories come from sitting in the pub looking at these things. But I just remember thinking, who is this guy? And, and like, like... Where's he coming from? Because I think we get him from like Qatar or somewhere like that. Like, at the Dubai. time, it was the, yeah, it was some mad thing. And, and then, um, so we had no clue who he was. Um, and I, I know from other pods that sort of Mandy Halliday um, said his methods were probably not suited to a team like ours. Um, and you, I mean, you seem to sort of just get bombed out by him as well. So, what 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 is the character of Pedro Cucino like? Because he seems to do it a lot. Obviously, Barry McCoy ended up leaving as well at that time. So. Is, is this just this manager wants to come put his own stamp in and, and maybe just doing the wrong things? Jose Marino without the without the brain, I think. <laughs> be a headline now, oh, sugar. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not for me. Um, come in, tried hard. I was as confused as everyone else. It was, it was, it was a mad time. And then, like I say, he, he then was telling me about my future and my career, and you know, I was never going to play and etc. So, yeah, it was, it was awkward. It was weird, but he's your boss at the time, and you've got to respect it. So, um, I knew I had two years left on my deal. I was like, am I going to outlive him? Probably. So let me. Yeah. What were I going to do, you know? So I decided to go on loan. Um, but yeah, bizarre appointment. Um, a bit disappointed he had such a big hand in how my career turned out at Rangers, to be honest, because someone like, mm -hmm. like that's an example of how how someone can have a, you know, an impact on your career. But yeah, it was a wild appointment, I think, personally. Yeah, and I was just going to, like, on the, on the sort of, you, you said he talked to you there, does, does he just, Give, does he even give you a reason, or is he? Are you just not involved in match days? He just comes in and says, "Look, you're just not part of my plans," and, and there's no. That's it. Pretty much, pretty <laughs> much as like, pretty much as bold as that. Um, yeah, pretty much as bold as that. Didn't get too much answers. Got just yeah, no. I'd rather not talk about him, but that's right. It was, it was, it was uh, yeah, it was a bizarre situation and. He come in and, and said his stuff, and that was it. So. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. I think I know. I certainly feel like we, we lost a actual few good players because of that appointment, which is is mad. That, like you say, a manager can have that much impact uh, that ultimately didn't end up being around very long. Mm. Um, so the, obviously, the media at the time are saying that you, you've been told to find yourself a new club. You moved to Wimbledon on loan. Uh -huh. um, have a pretty decent season there. You play the majority of the games. Yeah. Back to you know assists goals, um, you then at the end of that season you leave Rangers. What are sort of the offers on the table? Because you, I mean you moved to Iran, which is like we, we had a we, we had Mo Ross on um, the former Rangers right back, and, and he moved to China at one point, and that was a bit bizarre. But uh, how did the Iran move come around? Honestly, I don't know how it come around. <laughs> my agent just called me one day and was like, "Would you go here?" And I was like. No. And then we talked about it and obviously things happened. I was like, why not? All right, let's let's give it a go. And like we got ninety thousand fans at home and stuff, so it wasn't like I was going to a small club. It was you know the way I was treated there was like a king in a way. It was kind of weird, yeah. Um but yeah, come out of nowhere. Come out of nowhere. So thought I'd try it, didn't really work out. Um, had ankle surgery in London like a few months later, and then that was it. Didn't go back. Oh, um, okay, so so it was lit. It was honestly weeks. Like it was weeks. It wasn't. Yeah, it was weeks. I played like one game, <laughs> but it was good. It was a good experience, and you know, great people out there. It's kind of sad what's happening right now um, with what's going on out there. But you know, real, real friendly people and stuff like that. Um, wow. It was a good experience, life experience, I suppose, and. I come back and that was it. Brilliant. I mean, I was expecting like some fireworks, but yeah, obviously you're no, not really there. That, no, there wasn't. There was honestly, it was nothing. It was. I went out, played, 
got injured and then come home. Now, like, like it's as best as I can put it. I had I had, I had uh, ankle surgery and then that was it. Yep. So you, I mean, it, it, one sort of last thing on the run. It says you spent time at loan at another Iranian club. Was that just? Oh uh, no, yeah, that was just part of me leaving. It wasn't. I, I didn't. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, got you. I, I, <laughs> um, so you, you then moved to Orange County. Um, Again, so, so how do, is this just another, your agents called you up and said, you know, there's a chance to go here. Um, you obviously, is Rob Keane in there at the time? No, I was there first. Right, you were there first. Okay. Um, but they then go on to, sort of like a two-part question, I guess, how did that move come about? And obviously, they then go on to sort of have a bit of an affiliation with Rangers. So you end up sort of around a lot of Rangers youngsters again. Um, are you are you taking any sort of coaching on at this point? Or is it just you, oh. you're still trying to? Yeah, the, the the OC stuff come about because it was forced on me again. I, it's weird how my career paid out because if you look at when I left, I'd say when I signed that three year deal at Rangers, kind of from mm-hmm. then it was like a bit of a whirlwind. Like it was yeah, yeah. I wasn't playing, I was online. Da, da, da. But I signed for three clubs in a year, and you can't sign for more than that in a year. Right, got you. So I went to Iran, Rangers, and and Wimbledon. So when the Iran thing kind of didn't work. I've come home and I've got like seven months left of a season, but I couldn't sign anywhere because of the rules. So it was like, right, you need to go to India or America. So I was like, well, I'm not going to India. So then I've made, my agents made a couple of phone calls and like OC replied that day, like, yeah, we'll do it. So uh, I played with Richard Chaplow at Doncaster. He was the assistant, which yeah. kind of obviously helped me. The The guy who scout, the chief scout was was someone who was watching me when I was at Brentford and, you know, I later found out they were keeping tabs on me, but the club he was at. So it kind of worked. Um, and obviously without, I've always wanted to live around there. It was weird. Mm-hmm. I went on holiday to LA, went to Laguna Beach and I was like, imagine living here one day. So when I got that call, I was like, let me just go and see how it goes and just yeah, definitely. take a year. So I live 10 minutes from Laguna Beach now and like, you know, kind of, pinch myself sometimes so that come about played a year um did all right played another year you know then a covid year hit um so that's that that kind of stopped everyone in their tracks which is when i started the coaching company um um and then we we kind of took off from there really um i got rob out after my first season he come and see me like in the summer and was kind of like wow um, he wasn't really enjoying his football at South End at the time and he was injured or whatever. So I managed to speak to the club. They got him out. And uh, yeah, that's it. We kind of started Prospect from there and, and now I'm doing the coaching. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what I wanted to come on to, yeah. sort of the, the here and now. I mean, how, how much, again, this could just be like sort of what Wikipedia and things that he's doing. How much is, is LA Force part of it? Is this just like where you were playing or, or is, oh, it, no, is, it, is no. this... I, re- I retired like 2020. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, yeah, no one knows that. Uh, I, yeah, I stopped playing in 2020 and done my coaching. Okay, and then um, this year, beginning of this year, I was kind of like, this club plays trains next near my house. Like, da da da. Do I fancy it? So they wanted me to go and play. So I went and played for them for. A couple of months, um, but the level wasn't great. It didn't really work my schedule. Mm. There's a lot of traveling involved, and I was missing out on work. Like I couldn't. So in the end, I was like, "No, I'm, I'm, I'm done." So we ended up just, just ripping that up and calling it a day. Um, so I was a brief, brief spell to try and get back out play, and like I can still play. So my ego is there, and my ego is telling me you can still play, but I just, it just didn't make sense for me to do it. You know, I was. I was training for like two hours in in night eighty degree heat, and then going and going and coaching my kids, and then same again, and then trying. I was just like, I'm done with this life. I've done it, done it for like the last twenty five years. You know, <laughs> that's fair enough. So, Prospect Soccer Academy, um, where I guess just where did the idea come from, and is is coaching something you you've always been interested in, or it's just sort of popped up in the last few years for you? Yeah, no, I wasn't really interested in it um, playing. I didn't really think too much about anything else playing. I was just, just focused on playing. Um, and it wasn't until maybe I left Rangers 
um, and come out here that I was like, well, this isn't going to be forever, um, mm -hmm. you know. So then, you know, I started coaching um, kids and there's a big market out here for private one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, which which isn't in the UK. Um, and where I live is, is, is a good area for that. You know, it's an affluent area and people want to do well and they invest in their children's and in youth sports and stuff. So I kind of just fell into it. Then COVID happened and everything shut down. So people wanted me to train their, their kids and, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, and we just kind of took off from there. And, and like you say, we've 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 grown organically. We haven't really done too much advertising, marketing, etc. We've just got a real good client base now, and we do um, we do camps now for Nike as well, which is which is wow. good for us in the summers. And so it's just you know kind of snowballed into something that, that we love doing and we love helping kids and. And we've got a few boys that, you know, will be coming to Europe in the next couple of months, if not maybe a year. Uh, we've helped help them come over. We've helped a couple of boys get to MLS clubs. So I think in the end, we just want to be able to to help the talent, which is in California, because there's a lot um, yeah. to get to Europe. Um, that, that would be that would be the ideal, to be honest. That's amazing. Um, I've got one, so one last main question then, like some real, really quick three or four quick fires um so, so finally on the, on the main what what's the future for for harry forrester i guess is this are you, is it just all now um the prospect soccer academy or is it maybe coaching a, a senior club in the future or what what is the future um yeah prospects probably the future right now um building the camps building building what we do um trying to help the young pros that we've got to to get over to europe and, and become pros whether that's just in Europe or MLS, whatever it is. Um, after that, who knows? I'm not really too interested about coaching a men's team, to be honest. Um, but there's colleges out here. There's yeah. there's all sorts of stuff out here that, that I could dabble into. So right now, I'm just gonna we're just gonna build prospect me and Rob and just see where that goes and help as many kids as we can and just go from there. Really, that's absolutely amazing. Um, wish you all obviously all the very best for that. Um, and then finally, just the the, the quick fires. Um, just get asked to everyone. Um, best player you've ever played with? With, I'd say, um, Jack Wilshire. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, best player you played against? Thiago for Liverpool. Wow. Uh, best manager you've had? Huh. I'll answer with two questions. I think the best I've had for me was Warbs. Yep. Um, what he done for my career. I'd say who got the best out of me, Juve Rosler. Wow. wow. We, didn't have good, we didn't have a good relationship, but he got the best <laughs> out of me. Um, and then just sort of obviously you, you, you aren't there now, but um, Rangers in recent seasons, obviously they've had Gerard and now um, so Michael Bill's back there now. Would, would that have been something you would have liked to work under as a, as a player? Because, it, again, very attack-minded sort of coaching. Is, is that something you, you would have think would have suited you, especially under someone like Gerard, who's obviously a household name? Yeah, I actually come back for pre-season that year. I was with them for a bit. Um, yeah, I would have loved to have given that a go. Really, really would have. But I believe the decision was made before I even got back into pre-season. Um, right. I'm honest. So it was kind of one of them. Um, I was made aware of that as soon as I got back. It was no, there was no, like, dishonesty or anything so mm -hmm. i didn't really get a chance to but yeah of course i would have loved to and um i got to got to play under him for a while in training i guess there's a highlight <laughs> yeah. um, and then the, the, the final final question um it's a bit of like a hypothetical i guess and, and yeah. it might you, your answer might not even be one um it's basically so you have a button and you've got a TV in front of you. You click it, it'll take you back to a moment in your career where there was maybe a fork in the road. You, you had a couple of clubs to choose from or, or a career decision to make. Um, and, and you can switch on this TV and it show, all it would do is show you what would have happened if you went the other way, if you, if you did it. It's, so it's not necessarily a regret, but maybe something you could have seen how something else panned out. Um, do, do you, is there anything in your mind that, that would come to that that you would have liked to see how it would have worked? Yeah, I think... Um... But the obvious one's the Ajax one. Mm. Um, at that point, that was that is a real left and right. And I think uh, I made the right decision for my career. The plan worked. I got injured in the champs, so it kind of fell through. But 
yeah, what if I'd have gone to Ajax and the way I was kind of playing there and the way it suited me, like what if I did make a good career there? What yeah. would happen? There was players playing. It was so funny. I, there was players playing at Man United in the Champions League a few years later, like I remember. And they were playing with me in the reserve team. And I remember thinking, without being arrogant, I was like, <laughs> wow, maybe I, maybe I could have. Um, <laughs> but hey, who knows? Who knows? No. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely amazing. I just want to obviously say thank you so much for, for joining me for this. It's um, obviously really, it's a great pleasure to talk to you again and obviously relive some of these and wish you all the best for the future because I think even judging from just this chat and, and some of the, like this IX decision you made, Jamie, you obviously got a very smart head on your shoulders. So um, sure. just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me, uh, Harry, and just wish you all the best. Cheers to you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.